Hi guys, it's Katie. Happy Halloween. And since it's Halloween, I thought I would talk about one of the most graphic shows I've seen, Gotham. Now I know a lot of you probably don't think it's all that graphic, but I don't like scary stuff, so this is about as graphic as it gets. And you've got to admit, for some of these episodes, it's pretty dark. I mean, I know it's Gotham, but still, it's like, too dark. <laughs> Spoiler warning, I am going to talk about season two, so if you haven't caught up yet, you might want to stop the video now, and if so, I'm sad to see you go, but I would rather not spoil things for you. Okay, and let's begin. I was just getting into Batman, and a story about Jim Gordon did not seem all that appealing to me. But it did surprise me in many ways. Once I saw the trailer for The Court of Owls, I knew I had to watch it to find out what happened. So, is it good? Is it bad? Do I like it? Well, let's begin with the things I enjoyed about it, starting with the characters. I love what they've done with Detective Bullock. In the animated series, he was always so annoying and grumpy. He's still kind of like that in Gotham, but here it shows that he actually cares about Gordon and follows him because he believes in him. Sure, he's still a slob and bends the rules a little, but amazingly, we learn that Gordon does too. You feel like they have an actual connection, a history, whereas in the animated series, he just seemed to be the headache that Gordon had to put up with. As for Gordon himself, he's okay. I like the actor, and he gets a few fun lines here and there but I don't like how they've made him out to be a pretty boy who gets all the ladies. But we'll talk about that later. I love what they've done with Penguin and Nygma. They're both such great characters. They're pretty different from their original counterparts from the comics and the TV series, but I think they've changed for the better. In the originals, they mostly seem like bad guys who are always meant to become bad. But here, they could have turned out to be good guys. Penguin works from the ground up to get a position of power among the gangs of Gotham, where all he wants is a little respect. He even helps Gordon out from time to time, usually doing favors for him so Penguin can get something from him in return. But sometimes it seems he really does appreciate Gordon. Nigma works at the Gotham City Police Department. He actually starts off helping Gordon solve some of his crimes. They're great friends. That is so much better. He still loves riddles, but he's just odd, not bad. One of my favorite scenes is when he does eventually get sent to Arkham, and he's diagnosing the other patients. He knows what mental disabilities they're struggling from, and he actually knows how to deal with them, which helps him survive in there. He is spot on, in my opinion. One of the best Riddlers we have ever gotten. He's so clever and smart, which makes him fun and entertaining. And I think that's what made us like the original Riddler so much. He wasn't so much crazy as eccentric and trying to prove he's smarter than Batman, who, granted, is one of the smartest people in the DC Universe. But by far, the best thing about these two is their relationship with each other. It is adorable. They understand one another. And because of this, they form an actual relationship that's based on more than personal gain. The moments between the two of them are one of the only reasons to watch the show. One of my favorite scenes is when Penguin visits Nygma in Arkham. He brings him a puzzle and tries to cheer him up. It's so cute. Another thing I enjoy about the show is all of the hints at the future for these characters. Especially young Bruce, who is adorably small at his big company table. He's so inexperienced at this point. He has no coordination, no skills, no street smarts, and it is so cute. He gets into a fight at school and tells Alfred he's not very good at fighting. And I'm sitting there like, but you will be, soon, in the future. I think that makes it all the more amazing when he becomes such a great character in the future. Most people seem to forget that Batman learned all of these skills. He wasn't born with them. Because he has no abilities or powers, he has to obtain power and travel the globe to learn to fight and be smarter than the people he's fighting. One of the people he apparently learns from is Selina Kyle, which I was very surprised to find early on. Still, their relationship is pretty cute, mostly because they're both so adorably young. My favorite scene is when they're both dancing at an event. They're both so tiny compared to everyone else, and it just screams cuteness. The person Bruce seems to be learning a lot of his fighting skills and techniques from is Alfred, which I was very surprised to find out at first because most of the versions of Alfred we've seen don't want Bruce to be out fighting and doing all of his Batman detective work. This Alfred is concerned about him too, but he wants him to at least be prepared. And now, for the main issues I have with the series. Oddly enough, this also deals with the characters. The characters of Gotham seem to be almost nothing like their comic counterparts. I know that sounds a bit contradictory, but hear me out. I mean, they got the names and the powers right, and some essence of the character, but the backstories, motivations, or anything else that makes them such great characters in the comic book universe seem to be missing or altered in such a way that it doesn't make 
any sense whatsoever. Mr. Freeze loses his wife really early on and has no motivation for killing people. His wife was the sole reason that he did any of those bad things. He was trying to find a cure for her, and now his motivation is gone. And then when Doctor Strange just tells him to do bad things, he does. He wasn't a bad person, he was just trying to do something for his wife, and he was just going about it the wrong way. And don't even get me started on Gordon and Lee Tompkins. Oh my gosh, every time they're on screen together, I roll my eyes. Granted, Lee's character is pretty much what we know her to be in the comics. A nice person and a doctor. And that's it. I don't know what made them decide to make her Gordon's girlfriend. Gordon's supposed to be with Barbara, and have a daughter named Barbara, who will eventually be Batgirl. Well, I guess that's out the window, because Barbara turns out to be mentally unstable. The ages are completely off in this show, too. Selina, Bruce, and Ivy, who later turns out to be Poison Ivy, are all kids. But Mr. Freeze, Penguin, and Nygma are all adults. And all of them are surfacing right now, instead of later when Batman is around. Batman's the reason that many of them come to exist in the first place. Many people believe that Batman makes his villains great, and vice versa. One of the reasons the police and the people of Gotham rely on Batman so much in the comics is because these villains are supposed to be the ones that the cops can't handle. So if Gordon can take them on, there's no real need for Batman. Another major problem with the show is that it's a prequel, so we already know what happens. Most of these characters survive and go on to be in the future with Batman. They can threaten Gordon and Bruce Wayne all they want, but there's really no danger, and that makes the adventure and action scenes kind of dull. Also, nothing good can happen to the villains we've come to like, because we know they are despised, hated, and alone in the future. Nygma, for example, was in love with a girl named Miss Kringle, but she was going out with a jerk, so Nygma killed him. And then he started dating her, and their romance was really cute, and Nygma was really happy, but it's not like they can get married and be happy, so she has to find out what he did, and to stop her, Nygma ends up killing her. Broke my heart, that scene, but I knew it wasn't going to last. A similar thing happened with Penguin. The only thing he cares about in the world is his mother, and she gets killed, of course, by one of the other villains. He later finds out he has a father, and I'm like, oh, yay, a silver lining. But then, you guessed it, the father is killed by the stepmother. He could have lived a happy, normal life. He was declared sane. He was much better. I know he was kind of brainwashed a little bit, but at least he was happy. But because we know their future, this has to happen to them. They have to be bad guys. That's what they are. And as much as I love Selena and Bruce... I just keep thinking that if he knows all about her now, and they're best friends, and they're always hanging out, when he meets her again in the future as Catwoman, wouldn't he recognize her immediately? What would that even be like? Would he even fight her? And as idealistic an idea it seems to be, of her just living in Wayne Manor and having a normal life with him, which makes total sense, and I don't know why they're not doing that. Oh wait, I know why. It's because that's not what happens in the comic books. She has to end up being Catwoman. So what is the point of all this exactly? Granted, I do applaud the creators for making something different and relatively original. It's an interesting idea. The characters are still good, even if they're not how we know them, and some changes are welcome. But the fact that they seem to be still leading up to this inevitable future sort of hinders them. If they had focused on one element instead of trying to cram multiple characters and ideas into this familiar storyline, Perhaps it could have been better. I would have loved for them to just make the show about young Bruce and Alfred trying to figure out who killed Bruce's parents, and what it was like for him to grow up with Alfred as his caregiver. That's kind of where it seemed to start. Bruce asked Gordon to look into the murder of his parents, so I thought it would be more of a focus on that, whereas each crime they encountered had something to do with Bruce's parents' murder. We, we so rarely see Bruce's past as a young kid other than the time that his parents die. We get maybe one, two, three scenes out of like the history of everything Batman related that point to what his past was like. Maybe I'm missing a couple in there, but they're so rare you can't even count them. I just want to see more of young Bruce and Alfred and what it was like for him to deal with the loss of his parents and... Having Alfred now as his guardian, Alfred doesn't have any experience. We need to see more of that. We need to see more of how they interact with each other. But instead, we have all these future villains and other plot lines that hog a lot of the focus. All in all, it's just an okay show. 
There are some moments where the fangirl in me is squealing with delight, and then there are others where I wish they could just fast forward all of this and I would still know what was going on. The fact that it sort of hints at the future and deals with young Bruce is really enjoyable. And like I said, it's different and interesting to watch. Just some of the time it can be too different. If you love Batman and love everything about him, I would still stick to the original material. But if you have an open mind and are curious to see what they've changed and done with some of your favorite characters, I would keep watching. I for one enjoy it, and I look forward to seeing what lies in store in Season 3. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for 200 subscribers. I honestly can't believe it. Thank you so much. If you have any comments or suggestions, any ideas for a future movie, anything you want me to review specifically, feel free to leave them in the comments. Please like this video and subscribe to get updates about my future videos. And I hope you all have a safe, happy, healthy Halloween. Take care.